Hi guys, I'm here with George Eagley and we've been here in India for about a week, about a week, right? We arrived last Friday. Again. Uh, yeah, again. Uh, and uh, we got access to the lab on Monday. Uh, basically, uh, Suhas came to an arrangement with the bank because it really couldn't do what they wanted unless uh, he uh, had access to his lab. Uh, so, uh, he was very shrewd and the first thing that he did was he took the echo and uh, parked it somewhere so that uh, uh, that could not be locked up again. So that went with a friend of friends uh, uh, to be nice and secure. And uh, uh, before I get on to uh, something else, I will talk about what we've prepared here and what we've been doing in the week. Uh, um, well, essentially, I know I actually need to say, uh, the friend of a friend that has gone on Gapati, or it's something to do with the Ganesh, the, the elephant god. It's the hugest festival here in Mumbai, so he's gone back to his native place, and uh, he was meant to return today, uh, last, you know, definite, 100% going to return today, and uh, didn't, and was out of contact. And we've even sent someone to his house, and they're not there, and so... Whilst the reactor isn't locked in this lab, uh, it's actually locked in another building. Um, so, but we did not waste our time. Uh, we did not waste our time. We took a lot of videos, didn't we? Um, of, uh, firstly, uh, there's our ultrasonic units over here. Uh, and we might, we've got plenty of videos to share. Some beautiful things uh, we shared with the sprites on that. And then uh, I'm going to switch cameras now uh, to the front camera and I'll talk to you about the um, uh, processor, the, the foil processor that's been adapted to show us this uh, metal heating effect. So we did a lot of work, didn't we, uh, George, with this uh, foil processor, but it has this iron bar going through it and uh, it has this power unit over here, three-phase power unit, and what it's providing in this instance is 180 volts uh, static voltage uh, and a pulse of two to two and a half thousand um, at an ultrasonic frequency. Uh, and the ultrasonics are supplied by this unit over here. Actually, it's not there. It's a unit that was there. We've got other photos of it when it was operating. The ultrasonic unit comes out here uh, and that shakes into the water and the water transfers the energy through this insulating uh, piece here. So there's no conduct conduction path. There's a nylon here, there's Bakelite, there's more nylon and Teflon here. So uh, there's no conduction, electrical conduction path between this and the water that transfers the ultrasonics. And you'll hear on the videos, it's really noisy. So this goes through here, through the end of the reactor and in here. And if I come around the other side, uh, you will see that there is um, a gap of about a centimeter. So if he's got a, it's less than a centimeter on the bottom and more, it depends if he's lifting this up. But it, it comes out at about 100 volts per centimeter between the um, uh, cathodes uh, and uh, the anode. Uh, uh, and it's cathode at the bottom and cathode at the top with this 180 volt bias to the anode in the middle and the water fills up in here and uh, causes this uh, discharge uh, with the ultrasonic uh, high frequency uh, 2 to 2500 volts. And then down here it's grounded and this goes down to ground and uh, we did uh, some experiments which I will talk about in another video. Uh, but essentially um, one of the videos you'll see is it spent about three minutes in here in one position and then a section that was outside of the reactor came and started to go into the active zone over a period of, uh, well it started in there and came out of uh, in 42 seconds. So it, you know, the whole bit that came out hot in the Sparks video that, you, that we published uh, only spent a total of 42 pass seconds passing through here. Uh, certainly less than a minute. And then when it came out of here, and um, we'll show this on the Optris data when we get a chance to process that, um, but essentially it came out here uh, hundreds of degrees 
cooler than it did by the time it got over to here less than a second later so in this distance it went up it would appear to have gone and we need to check because it's quite difficult with iron um, because the emissivity changes uh, from 0.7 to 0.9 uh, when it's just sort of oxidized iron uh, to uh, 0.35 for molten iron and the interesting thing is between here and here it got so hot that it actually um, was drawn just by the, the force of just pulling the the, the, the uh, uh, steel rod out and I guess this is about uh, 8 mils diameter I need to check that uh, but it, it was drawn thin like you were drawing a piece of wire so it, it must have been approaching its melting point um, certainly it was metal softened uh, at that point it was high temperature according to the Optress which we had mounted uh, just here but um, it had this uh, sparky effect, a bit like a sparkler, and probably, in fact, probably almost exactly like a sparkler. Um, but then, uh, what we had after it was cooled down was something very, very interesting, which I'll also come to show you in another video. Anyway, um, what we've done in preparation for getting the Echo Reactor, uh, Ryan uh, and Brian, but particularly Ryan, who has all the equipment that we got. He's not able to come here um, uh, up to uh, sorry, after the 9th, so it was impossible for him to come here. So we've had to jerry-rig something up. Um, so the water supply we have is a 350 litre tank up here, which I think has probably got a hundred and something litres in it at the moment. That gets filled up every day, so hopefully that will be filled up um, uh, by the time we get to test the reactor. And that comes down uh, through this output pipe where we have... Um, about a maximum of about uh, I think it's four uh, liters uh, a minute what did we say we got out of this one about five point something liters well anyway five liters for uh, 50 seconds oh okay. so it's six liters five liters for 50 seconds so it's six liters and uh, so between these we actually only need four liters uh, to run the reactor assuming it's producing eight kilowatts um, uh, to uh, give us an output water of 60 degrees. So that comes down here, down here, down here into this uh, laminar flow generator, into the polycom. Now we uh, established during um, the aura testing that our highly accurate uh, pump, sorry, highly accurate flow meter, uh, Omega flow meter, which cost about seven or eight hundred dollars, uh, gave the accurate flow as measured by bucket and scales uh, and these uh, second-hand uh, census devices were at least half out um, so we had to ignore that during the aura testing but it is accurate at measuring the input temperature and the output temperature so what we're going to do is we're going to use this to measure the input and the output temperatures uh, we're also going to manually measure the input temperatures uh, and it seemed to be about 31.6 degrees, the input water temperature today. And then the output temperature, we're going to measure that by, th this will go into the echo reactor and the, the, this lead will uh, go um, uh, onto the output of the echo reactor. Uh, and we're going to keep that at 60 degrees. And that's going to come down this pipe and all the way into this large bucket. I'm going to ask George to explain what's the po point of the large bucket and how we're going to do the water measurement. Actually, this is quite a full safe method, absolutely primitive and reliable. Uh, we measure <coughs> the overall output of the, let's say, hot side. And uh, after the termination of the uh, test altogether, we mix it uh, for safety reasons. And then we measure the temperature and uh, bucket by bucket the volume with the uh, <coughs> uh, error of let's say plus minus two percent not worse so in this case uh, actually we are able to know how much uh, water flow through the input uh, water temperature is quite stable and the output is whatever was the uh, time function will be integrated within this big bucket where the volume can be measured if necessary, remeasured 
So, so you, you actually measured the volume in the bucket earlier today, didn't you? And what did it come out as? Well, roughly 40 litres up to this brim. And we mm -hmm. still have a, a little safety if we want to have, let's say, 50 litres at the most. Okay, so uh, we've established that even if the Echo is producing 8 kilowatts out, which is its rated output, we need a flow rate of 4 litres. So this will give us 10 litres, uh, uh, sorry, 10 minutes of operation time, right? Roughly at the most, but usually 8 minutes is enough to fill it uh, to the lowest brim. Okay, and then uh, we we, get, we can have the option of counting buckets that we extract from it, right? But we want to get this to a steady state temperature, maybe empty it, because the reactor, as we understand it, took about five minutes to get to optimum operating performance. Uh, steam in the case when, when it was originally seen. Um, but in this case, uh, we're going to be running just with straight water to simplify things. Um, and uh, that would uh, maybe, maybe if it takes five minutes, we need to let it run for five minutes and then maybe put the hose in here, yeah? Yeah, so if we can ever run this reactor, uh, <clears throat> the heat output can be measured quite reliably. The other question of, of course, the three phase uh, input power, but that can be also measured reliably as it's a standard industrial practice. So, uh, and you said something about the heat loss in here and whether that's really worth considering. Um... Well, if the temperature does not exceed uh, 60 degrees C, uh, the temperature loss, the heat loss, uh, the heat flux uh, will be quite low because here this is uh, hell itself. <laughs> so, 40 degree, so there is not much uh, of a heat loss uh, from 60 degree to, to 35 degree, so it's negligible. And even if we do make this error, it is uh, strengthening the reliability of the test. We are on the safe side. So we are on the pessimistic side. Yeah, and you said before we measure the temperature, when it's full up, we're going to stir it, right? Stir it. So there cannot be any problem with, uh, let's say, we are measuring slightly hotter than the average. No, it will be integrated. And this is actually uh, a full safe uh, uh, test method. We always use it, and it's absolutely reliable. Thank you. So a quick close-up on the power monitoring. Uh, this is a three-phase uh, digital meter. It has a floating decimal point, so we should get a, a reasonably high level of accuracy. Um, we have got it set to the uh, 200 5 amp uh, setting on the back here. Um, and then we have these uh, current transformers, uh, which uh, take a sort of 200 amp line and translate it into a 5 amp. And these will go over the, the red, yellow, and blue phases uh, to measure the current flow through them. Uh, and obviously, we all know they need to be facing the right way, so we'll do a test uh, uh, up and running, uh, when it's up and running. And then this measures the voltage and is connected to the neutral as well. Obviously, you need that to, to measure the voltage. Uh, and what happens is we will feed the reactor's power from here uh, the red, yellow, blue, and, and neutral. Uh, so the, the three phases and the neutral. So basically when the echo reactor is here, we just wire that into here. We wire the other end of the lead into the three phase supply. And actually before we wire the wires from the echo reactor in here, we need to put these current uh, transformers over the uh, wires. And that should give us the uh, out input power on here. And then our output power will come from a combination of the output temperature, the input temperature, which, which again we will verify by uh, normal uh, thermometers, and the mixed 40 liters of water that come in here that we measure uh, with uh, this 5 liter measuring jug. Thank you for your time.
Okay, so uh, actually you may be able to see a little bit of perspiration. It is really hellishly hot here. I haven't even had time to shave this week as well. I look a bit rough, but I did put on the team shirt today. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, we have a flight in the morning um, and we cannot come back again this year. And uh, without going into the details, um, I don't think that's ever going to be an option in, in terms of this lab being here for us to, to be able to do the test. So it really is kind of now or never. Um, and it's gonna cost us about $2,000 to change our flights and get more accommodation and, and, and food and, and things at the other end. And uh, really we're appealing to you, can you help us with this? We need to make a decision very, very shortly. Um, so I, uh, we're gonna to speak to the other directors of the MFMP. Um, but this is, um, uh, this is crunch time, uh, literally, I mean, you, you have to be in Finland uh, with your family and on the Wednesday, Wednesday next, next week, which means we have to fly on Tuesday morning. Uh, I don't, I don't want to be doing this, <laughs> um, but this is, this is it. This is, so everything's set up, we, we've got a, a really reliable method for doing the thermal assessment. Uh, we've got um, backup um, uh, thermometers uh, with us, four, four uh, highly accurate thermometers. We have, even have a digital thermometer now, don't we? We have a good method of measuring the input power. Uh, so we will have an answer, but there is the proviso. We still can't guarantee we'll get the reactor. <laughs> so I, I, I know what we're asking is huge. Uh, we're basically asking, can you help us stay in hell uh, <laughs> for, for a couple of more days? Um, because uh, this is the culmination of Suhas uh incredible journey in Lena. Um, and we would like to have an answer. 